Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, YouTube. Today, I want to talk to you about a season mix that I, we make or I've made here in Texas um, that I use with all of my seafood, and it is fabulous. It's better than anything that any season mix that I've gotten in the store. So what you need is a jar, right? This is one of the ingredients. You're going to need this mushroom seasoning. You can buy it on Amazon or you can go to a Chinese food or Asian market and get it. You need some black pepper, garlic, cayenne pepper, onion season, and I need to get some salt. Here we are, some salt. Okay, so this bottle has measurements over. Move all this stuff out the way so you can see me. So this bottle um, has measurements on it, which I like. I got this from, I forget what, what, what it is, but it's a mason jar, right? So I'm going to take about four ounces measured of this season mix, this, this uh, mushroom season. I'm going to fill it up till it gets to the number four mark. And this stuff is powdery. I got a puff of smoke in front of me. Okay. Got about four ounces in there. Y'all can't see, can you? I've got about four ounces of, 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 of uh, mushroom seasoning in there. So it says you can buy this on um, Amazon. It's not very expensive. Okay, so we've done that. Now we're going to take some turmeric, also powdery. This time, uh, turmeric will stain your clothes. This time I'm going to use a spoon because I don't want to puff a turmeric um, on me. All right. I'm already sniveling. So I'm going to put one healthy tablespoon and two healthy tablespoons. You may need to use more. This is all going to be done by taste. There are no precise measurements for this, but... Um, very good when you use it on your fish. Very good. I'm moving back a little bit more so you can see me. Okay. Black pepper. Let me get a different spoon. I don't want my, my pepper to taste like turmeric. I'm going to put one, two, two black pepper. And I'm gonna get some salt. We're only gonna use, I'm gonna use a teaspoon, two teaspoons of salt. Salt is strong. One, two. Get some garlic. Put about a half an ounce of garlic in there. I'm up to what marker? I'm up to the 10 marker. Let me put some garlic in there. And that's about two tablespoons. Onion. Take this thing off. I'm going to put two teaspoons of onion. Two healthy heaping teaspoons of onion powder. And I like my seafood or I like my spices hot. You don't have to do this, but cayenne pepper, I believe it makes all the flavors taste better. So I'm going to do, can't get my teaspoon in there. Get a smaller one. I'm going to do, some people can't take the heat, so I'm going to do that much. All right. Take my jar and I'm going to shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it like you can. Shake it like a milkshake and do the best you can. All right, I used to sing that when I was a kid. <laughs> it was a childhood game. All right, this is not as dark as I'd like it to be, so I know it's not there yet. I'm going to get some more turmeric and put it in there. Where's my turmeric? Ah, right in front of me. Turmeric spoon is easy to find. It's going to be the orange one. The one with the orange residual in it. Turmeric is very good for you. It's an anti-inflammatory, just like ginger is. It's also, you can also get it in the root form. It's fresh. You're going to find it the same place you would find ginger and all of your tropical foods. Put 
this is dry too much. And I'm going to shake it again and see how it tastes after that. Right now, I'm just going for the color that I want. All of this stuff is making me sneeze. It's pepper. It's everywhere. Okay. I'm going to use one of my spoons and I'm going to throw that in the sink, okay? So, I'm just mixing it up, trying to crush up some of that stuff together. I'm going to take a little bit. Put it in my hand. And taste it. I need more mushroom seasoning. So, I'm going to open my bag back up. It's almost there. I was close. I'm going to put some more mushroom seasoning in it. Remember the flavor? I told you there were five flavors. So, the five flavors are sweet sour, bitter, sweet, sour, bitter, sour, and edamame. And this is edamame. What is this? this is mushroom. Mushroom is actually a flavor. And the only way you can bring out the flavors of mushrooms is by adding salt. A little bit of salt brings out the flavor of the mushroom. Shake it back up. Let's see. Let's get our spoon. Crunch some of that stuff up. I'm telling you, this is the best seasoning for your fish. I'm making this because I want to make some salmon patties. I need some more cayenne. It's not hot enough for me. You do not have to use cayenne, okay? This is just me I like cayenne I think that'll do it somehow I think the hotter a season is the more it opens your taste buds and allows you to taste or, or get the flavor but some people will disagree if they you don't like hot food you are not going to like it so let's look at this one and look at this one are they about the same? They never are because you know why? I don't measure. I'm going to put a little bit more turmeric in here and then I'm going to call it a day. Get my turmeric spoon. Then I got to wipe all this stuff up before I get turmeric all over me and all over my clothes. I know a couple of times that um, I've uh, been on camera, my shirt was all jacked up and <laughs> I was like, I hope they don't think I was dirty when I initially came on here because... I had clean clothes on. Trust me, I had clean clothes on when I first started. They just uh, got dirty as I went along. I guess I could use an apron, huh? I have an apron. I just never use it. I guess that would be a good idea. Yeah, I think I'll do that in the future. I have one apron, I believe, tucked away in one of the drawers. I'm going to shake this thing up. Hopefully it's hot enough this time. Oh, that's starting to look more like it. It's better than seasonal, McCormick, all of that stuff. Perfect. Perfect. It's not hot at all. And I want it hot. So I'm going to put some more pepper, some more cayenne in there. Do not follow me. Do not, do not follow me. If you don't like cayenne pepper and you don't like stuff super hot, do the taste test just like I did and then add your flavors, okay? You're making your own season mixture, your own season concoction. And I think that'll do it. So this stuff is gonna be a little salty when you all, um, when you all do it, but remember, the flavor is going to get dulled by whatever you're cooking with it. So season is always a little bit strong when you taste it by itself. But um, when you cook with it, it gets way, way, way um, milder. I'm going to drop a little bit in my hand. I still don't feel the fire. Jeez. Here we go. 
And if you're not used to doing what I do, do not pour it over the jar. <laughs> you'll be sorry. Either you'll end up having to scoop all the cayenne pepper out, which is expensive, and or your, uh, your mixture will be too hot. No measurements. Everything is done by taste. Everything. Most good cooks do that. Um, or and sh uh, chefs do it too. They say always taste your food and build your flavors. Okay. There it is. I feel the sting. I feel the burn. Hi. So we are going to make salmon croquets today. We have just made our seasoning and I made a mistake on the previous snippet. The five flavors are sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and edamame, which is the mushroom flavor. And the only way you can taste the mushroom flavor is to use salt. Hot is not a flavor. It's actually your body telling you you're in pain. I guess, I don't know. Oh, that's kind of weird for me because I like hot food. And maybe it's, I don't know. I don't know. Psychologically, I don't want to accept the fact that I like hot stuff. So here's my seasoning. You're going to need, okay, of course, the seasoning. We just talked about that. We need an egg. I'm trying to thaw out my eggs because I put them in the freezer in a cupcake and store them away. So I'm, I'm defrosting that. I have my bowl of water that has nothing to do with any of the ingredients. That's for the one of the, the so that I don't cry behind this onion. I have my salmon. I have my soup oyster, you know, oyster crackers. These are what oyster, oyster crackers, they're like 99 cents a bag. And I have an onion that I've used, I used this morning for breakfast, but I had some left, so I'm going to use that. And I've got three cloves of garlic. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my water over here so that when I'm cutting the onion up, I don't start crying in front of you guys. And here's my bowl. I'm going to drop that stuff in there, okay? I got my frying pan on the, on the fire already. It's not on, though, because... uh. It was smoking earlier. <laughs> I had to stop it. I had to stop it because it was gonna burn down the house. So I'm gonna cut this up. Let me do it right. See how my hands are? I had it wrong first, but I, I corrected myself. But flip it. When it becomes unstable, you flip it. And you keep on cutting. I'm making myself shorter because this camera, I broke a piece of equipment and I, I don't feel like going back outside to go get one. So you're going to see my hand from now on, okay? I'm coming closer to you. So I am trying to cut this thing down to get it into little pieces, All right? Then I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to start chopping. This is easy. You just put your hand on the top and you just keep on going around, right? When the onion gets out of control, gather it together again, chop again. I just lost the onion. It just flew across the floor. <laughs> and you might have some pieces that you need to, um, to um, cut individually because they may be tough. Using red onion, you can use white onion, you can use yellow onion, whatever onion you want to use. I'm just going through and I'm chopping this stuff up. Should have did it my mother's way or because I am, I'm starting to cry. <sighs> so you're going to chop it, right? Small little pieces. We don't want any big pieces in our salmon croquets or our salmon patties. We do not want that. So you're going to have to keep on cutting. Keep cutting. Keep on moving. Yes. Onions always make me cry, man. I guess it's... I don't know if the red ones are worse or what. Because the other day the water worked, but it wasn't red onions. 
red onions give you a sweeter flavor than the um, yellow onions and the white onions. So these are chopped up. I'm going to throw the little pit away. And I'm going to put this into a bowl. As tears roll down my face. <laughs> I'm going to try another hack. They said that if you run it under uh, warm water, you won't cry. I don't know how true that is. I'm going to put this in a bowl, get it away from me. And then I'm going to wash the board off and go on to my garlic. I'll be right back. Okay, and I'm back. I've wiped my tears and I've wiped my board off. Okay, well, I'm wiping my board off. Put my garlic on here. Easy way to do garlic is take it. Oh, I didn't clean my knife off. Just a second. That is terrible. Let me put this in my bowl. Terrible. We don't want to waste the onion. We just want to get rid of the residual. Wash it off. I thought I had it all done. Okay, I'm back. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I am going to take the garlic and I'm going to smash it. That's how you get your skin off easy. See that? Now, don't embarrass me, Garrett. There it is. All the garlic came off. All of it came off. Let's do the next one. Smash it. And it comes off like a shell. You see that? Real simple. No sense in fighting with the garlic. It comes off. Even if you got a soft one, you know, one of the younger ones that's on the inner inside, when you smash it, normally, don't embarrass me, garlic. It comes right off. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take that and I'm going to chop that up. I'm going to get the little edge off, the one that has the the um, root end of the garlic. I'm going to cut that off on each of them. Throw that away. I don't want that. That's the rough part. Turn this one around. Get the root part off and throw it to the side. Okay, you're not going to see me. I'm leaning right. I told you I broke my equipment. So, until I get back out there and get another one or order another one from Amazon, I'm just going to have to make do. I'm a new YouTuber. I didn't have duplicate equipment. And the one that I had was a little rustic anyway. So, I guess I'm going to have to go and buy a real one. A tripod. Tripod. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But this is the garlic. We're mincing it, making it really, really small. The more you mince garlic, the stronger it is. And we don't want any big pieces of garlic in our salmon patties or salmon croquettes. The only reason why you call it croquettes is because they're smaller. So, here we go. We're cutting it up really, really, really small. Really small. Put it back in a pile. Go over it one more time. Just for good general purpose. That onion gave me the blues, man. I was I was crying for real. I had to go wipe my eyes. My eyes were all red like I've been up all night. Mm. Lord knows I went to sleep last night. I sleep well. I sleep very well. No problems here. All right. So we got our garlic in a pile right there. Leave that there, and I'm going to go over to the oven. We'll be right back. On to the star of the show, the salmon. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take this salmon out. And where You see um, it's just clumped up like that. There are bones in this salmon, so I'm going to go through, and I'm going to check for bones. There they are. They're real soft. Um, because they've been canned, they've been pressurized, but I'm just going to take them out. Nobody wants to get a bone in their, um, in their, um, patty. So I'm going through and I'm checking for bones, especially the bigger ones like that. Oops, I dropped it. Like that one. Throw that away. I'm looking through. 
sifting through the salmon. Here we are. See that? There are bones in there. Pull them out. Some people don't, but I do. Uh, it's just uh, something that you, you, you know, you don't want any, some, you want your guests to be eating a croquet and come across this and they think you're trying to kill them with the fish bone. I mean, these fish bones are very pliable. They're, they, they're crumble when you touch them, but just for good measure, we're going to get rid of them, okay? They're not going to hurt anybody, but just take them out. Do your best to take them out. Okay, I think I got as much as I can. So that's done, all right? I don't want my salmon to fall down. I'll put this to the side. Wash my hands, because I got salmon hands now. know when I started making this but it was a while back and I fell in love with it it was I, I actually I um I used to eat cro uh not crawfish I'm getting all my my fish mixed up I used to eat codfish um fritters all the time because that's what my family made my family is West Indian or I was raised by West Indians but and we never ate salmon croquet as in, I wasn't exposed to that until I think I was an adult. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we don't eat a lot of fried foods and we don't, we certainly didn't eat it. We ate salmon, but it's just dried up salmon. We didn't know. You didn't know that you didn't know. So the next thing we use is my oysters. And I want to crack these up. Now, if you don't have oyster crackers, just use regular crackers. As long as you have some type of crackers. I like these better. I think they taste better. I'm going to put, I'm not going to crack all these up. I'm gonna crack enough for this. So I'm gonna use about a half a bag, and this is 10 ounces, so about five ounces. If I need more, I'll crack more. And I'm throwing it all over the countertop, everywhere, making a mess. So the easiest way to do that is to do that. And then, you know how I am, rustic, right? I'm gonna get a little frying pan. And I'm going to slap it down. You can use a rolling pin. And I leave some, some room so the air can come out of these, this bag. You can use anything. I'm not hitting it very hard, but these crackers don't take much for them to crunch up. You see that? They're becoming cracker dust. And that's what I want. I do not want any big pieces of crackers. That's why I like these also, because it doesn't take as much. They're hollowed out in the center. So this is why I like them, because you can do this, and they crack up just like that. I'm making a mess again, but I just wanted to prove my point, how quickly they um, fall apart. And they're, they're a dollar a bag. They're, not as, they're more expensive than buying a, a box of crackers, uh, if you buy the generic print brand but they're easier to work with. You wanna get those crunched up really good. And we're just prepping. Then we gotta, after we finish this, we have to um, saute our onions and our garlic, get those nice and translucent. And then we can start meshing everything together. All right, I got my crackers done and I'll be back once um, I'm ready to start frying, excuse me, making my um, onions translucent and, and, and incorporating everything together. I'll be right back with a bowl, a big old bowl, and I'm going to mix everything together. And then we're going to fry it back, take it back to the frying pan and fry it up. Be right back. <laughs> All right. My pan is hot. I have it on approximately number seven. I had my apron on, but I couldn't do it. It was rubbing against my neck and it just, it was annoying me. I, I just, and now I know why I keep it in the drawer. Okay, so I put coconut, um, not coconut milk. I put coconut oil in the bottom of this frying pan. And move that down. I'm gonna take my onions and I'm gonna put them in here. 
oil is not hot enough yet. If your oil is not hot enough, all your onions will do is sop up all of the oil. And that's not good. You want them to, to cook. You don't want them to be greasy and, and stuck to the bottom of the cast iron skillet. So I'm frying this up. I remember the late nights of me going to night school um, for cooking or for culinary arts and man, some of it was just a blur. They give us the recipe, they give us a demonstration of how to do it and then they send us off and make us do what they just did with different cuts of meat. And there were people in my class who were just learning how to cook. They had never, they, they weren't cooks. They, they, they never learned anything at home. They never cooked at home. And you could tell. So there was this one guy, a uh, big, um, big black guy. And I'm black. No, you know, so we hung out together. So he's hanging out with me. And then I realized, I said, this dude don't know how to cook. That's why he's using me. So the teacher, you know, every time I would do something, let's call him Tyler. Tyler would watch me and, and, and he'd be right next to me asking me questions and he'd just follow exactly what I do. Well, the teacher, the chef noticed, right? So he took me and put me on the other side in a different kitchen. And man, I felt so bad for that guy. I was like, man, he can, you know, if he if if he can watch me and do it, that means he can do it. I don't understand why the chef did that, but I guess he didn't want me to help him. And I guess he didn't know who could cook and who couldn't. So he separated us. Maybe he thought I couldn't cook. That little little thing, she mm, she's too cute to be in the kitchen. She probably don't know what she's doing. He's helping her. That's probably what he thought. No. Nah. It was the other way around. So my onions are getting soft. And, he, you know, the guy would come over and he'd be, you know, he'd, he'd forget what ingredients he was supposed to have. And he'd be like, I'd have an onion. He'd be like, Denise. Uh-oh, I said my real name. Jamerica. <laughs> Can I get half of your onion? And I would give it to him. I would always give him, give him stuff and try to, you know, try to share it out so he'd have enough. And after a while, he didn't come back. I guess the, the instructor, the chef, told him, don't go back over there. You're on your own. This is a test, and she can't help you. Which was unfortunate, because, you know, the guy the guy was just trying to, to, um, to cook. And some people, some people thought, I never thought that I was going to be a chef when I graduated. I, I told you that I went to culinary arts school, college, for just because I wanted to do it because I like cooking. I never expected to be a chef. Well, there were some people who thought that when they graduated, they were going to be a chef. You can't be a chef unless you have good knife skills and you know what flavors go together. It's just experience that make you a chef. But these people are like, no, I'm paying all this money and I'm taking out student loans for this college and I, I should be a chef when I graduate. Well, they were told, I think it was the first class that my classmates said something about, um, you know, their credentials after they graduated. And the guy, the, the chef, the executive chef who was in charge of that class told us, no, you're not a chef. You're just going to be a, 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 a cook that's classically trained. So, anyway, they were mad. I was like, how are you going to get mad when they told you, you know, they should, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they may have told them before they started, um, before they paid for their tuition, their tuition for the, for the semester, but I don't know if they did, because some of them seem quite perturbed about that answer. I'm going to turn this off. My, um, onions, they are soft to touch. They turn it like into a mushy mixture, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so that's just another school story. Um, let me get this off the, off the heat. Of how uh, the communication 
of, of, of what, you know, you think that you go to college and it's going to make you get, make you get a better job. Well, not in the culinary arts field, unless you're already a person who is working in the kitchen and you just want the, um, the formal education to back it up. Otherwise you graduate from culinary arts school. You are just a cook. You're still a cook. You have to earn, earn the, um, rights to be called the chef. I certainly am not a chef yet. Maybe one day, but not now. So here we are. We got all our onions. I'm trying to get them all out here because I want to use this frying pan. I do not like doing dishes. When I would cook at home, I had two brothers, and my older brother did not know how to cook at all. My little brother learned how to cook after I left home. So I would do all of the cooking. My mom worked. My grandmother would cook, but she she would teach me how to cook stuff. And then she'd um, and once I was old enough to cook on my own, because um, we had a, we had different we had separate apartments. She it was a house, but it had three apartments in it, and she was in the middle, and we were on the top. So once I was old enough to cook, where you know unsupervised, she would just show me how to do stuff on the at, on the, you know downstairs, and then send me off just like the chefs did to do it myself. And I um, she didn't believe West Indian women are very stern women; they don't tell you stuff twice. So if they teach you one time, you better get it. Or they're gonna call you names <laughs> and ask you why you can't learn. Weren't you listening? So, I um I don't want to get this on this thing because I need this again. I'm going to I'm gonna wash this off and I'm gonna wipe that out. Let me see. I'm not saying all West Indian women are like that. Just the ones that were in my family. <laughs> and maybe I'm like that. I hope not. Wow, that may have worked out. Huh? I might be a little hard on people. <laughs> So we're going to get our crackers. We got our garlic and our onions here. We have our salmon. We have our egg. I'm gonna throw the egg in there. We have our egg. We have our seasoning and a spoon. So I'm gonna mix this egg up. Try to get this thing defrosted. It's giving me the blues, this darn egg. I put it in the freezer and I forgot all about it. I do not have any more eggs in the refrigerator, so I have to use the ones that are frozen. I freeze them in um, cupcake di cupcake holders, right? And then I just keep them in a, in a Ziploc bag like this in the freezer so that they don't go bad. Well, they're not going bad because I'm going through them quite quickly this month, which is not a good thing because I won't go buy no more eggs. I live in the HOA. They don't want us to have chickens. So, let me move this out the way so you see what I'm doing. So, I'm mixing this up, the egg, into my onion mixture, right? Take my crackers and put some of those in. Not all of them. So, I don't know how much money you need. I'm going to take some seasoning. Not a lot. Because you're going to taste as you go. The meat is already cooked, so you don't have to worry about any kind of food poison. I'm going to take a tablespoon of that, put it in. Then I'm going to mix that up. I don't like breaking up my um, breaking up my, my salmon that much. I like to be able to taste salmon. I don't want it to be like a salmon mushy mix mixture. So I'm going to take my salmon. I'm going to start breaking it up. Not on the floor, but in the... Bowls, Jamaica, in the bowl. We want it in the bowl. All right, so I'm keep on taking this stuff apart, breaking it up, and putting it in the bowl. It's quiet around here today. It's been quiet lately. I think I saw my neighbors out there a couple of days ago. It's like ghost town in this in this subdivision. Everybody is just stays to themselves. And you know, they used to come outside a lot more prior to, you know, the big C. And I mean, since the lockdown and all that stuff happened, everybody seems like everybody's way of living, everybody became very more private. I know at this house, we got used to staying in the house 
more often and 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 not going out and, and venturing out as much if we did get anything it would be instacart and it would be um what was the other thing we use amazon amazon made a lot of money off this household oh lord i could I man now i have alexa and she says so you have blah 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 in your cart do you want to buy it and i'm like what now they're like missing me because I, you know, I went on an Amazon, I was on an Amazon binge for a while and I am not getting back on that wagon. I'm not falling off the wagon and going back to Amazon. Not like that anyway. I was buying all kind of stuff, just watching YouTube at night and watching all kinds of commercials and people telling you, you need this and scaring you into buying this and, and telling you that your life is jacked up because you don't have this product. <laughs> And you're like, yeah, yeah, I need that. I need that. And you buy it and you're like, what the heck? I thought, why did I buy this? Why? Things would come to my house and I would not even know what was coming to the house. I was like, oh God, another box is in front of my house. I don't even know what this stuff is. That's when you know you got a problem. So I cut them off. That was my one of my new, one of my new year's resolutions because I was like, shoot, I am not spending all that money on this stuff. I need my money. Amazon is they are missing me for sure. I see that little little green light pop up on my um Alexa app. And she asked me if I want to buy stuff now. Before she had an attitude. You gotta she she says, um, you know, she had an attitude when I would talk to her. Now she's all nice and whatnot. I think her voice changed. That's just me being psycho. <laughs> her voice didn't change, I hope. I hope not. <laughs> She's probably listening right now. I know one of my girlfriends told me that she and her husband were um were talking one night and Alexa started laughing. I don't believe them. I didn't believe that story. I hope it's not true. I hope it is not true. They say Alexa is listening. Alexa's all over this house. All right. So I'm gonna take this. I got all my salmon. I left some some snip snippets there. They didn't look good. It looked like bones. So I'm going to mix this up. And see how it looks. The egg is the binding agent. That's why you put an egg in there. My chihuahua is making a lot of noise again. Little dogs are so hard to train. So he hides. And I look and he's doing something. I'm like, okay, you're going outside. You're going outside until you get it together, brother. You are not going to tear up my house. Make it smell like a dog. So he's outside. I guess he's mad. He let me know. I don't care. I'd rather him to be mad than for me to be mad. I'll let him in before dark. <laughs> I don't want the wolves or the coyotes to get him. We don't have wolves, but I know we got coyotes. So, Texas. <laughs> I'll put a little bit more season in there, right? And then I'm gonna give it a taste. There is egg in here. If I pass out and I die, y'all don't see me no more. You know that the egg got me. <laughs> oh Lord. There's people who eat raw eggs all the time, but they talk about I think it's salmonella salmonella. <laughs> I should know I got a food handling license or I used to. I don't know if that thing expired or not. All right, we're going to take a little taste. Just a little bit. Way more season. Eventually, he's going to have laryngitis. He'll stop. I'm not abusing him. Trust me. He's well fed. He's just spoiled. He's only been out there. A few, maybe 30 minutes, maybe. And it's not cold out there. It's like 65 degrees out there. All right. Let me see. Mixing this stuff up.
little bit more. Hmm. I know my high school friends, a lot of them are on my Facebook page and they were like, oh my God, really? Her? If you could see me now. <laughs> okay, we're ready to fry. I'll be right back. So we're done now. Well, we're not done, but we're done with the mixture. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoop out, I'm gonna use my tablespoon to scoop out to try to get the same amount of salmon patties or the same, the same structure or the same size salmon patties per salmon patty. And I'm gonna pat it down. And there's one. Get a spoon, spoon it out again, do it again. Round it out. This is why you have your egg in there because it, it keeps the hold of the salmon patties or the croquettes. I'm not making croquets because croquets, I call them croquettes, croquets are way smaller than the salmon patties, okay? And I use these on occasion, like when I don't feel like making anything for lunch, I have them in the freezer cooked already. And I just warm them up when I need them and put them on a sandwich. Just like hamburgers, just like salmon hamburgers, okay? I know I keep saying okay. <laughs> I gotta work on that. Gonna get that together. Our frying pan, our cast iron skillet is heating up as we speak. Try to get these the same size. And another rule of thumb is like, if you put your hands together, that's the size that you should want. Men, I don't know, yours would be way bigger than mine, but that'll be all right. Make it into a hamburger. I have four of them, right? I'm running out of mixture. I'm gonna try to use this one maybe a little bit bigger than the rest of them. I'm running out of mixture, mixture. And so that is the importance of the egg. The egg keeps the structure of the, the croquet or the salmon patty so that it doesn't fall apart in the skillet. Skillet. Hmm, that's not a word I've used in a while. That's what we used to call it when we were a kid, skillet. Any residual, I'm gonna just put it on top of the patties. It's still soft, so I can get all of this in there. Okay, I'm gonna throw this in the sink and wash my hands. Okay, back to the coconut oil. I have my frying pan on five, which is a medium heat. And I put it on, I want it on five on the large burner, not the small one. I'll keep doing that. Get a spoon, about a tablespoon, a half a tablespoon of oil. I'm gonna leave this out here because I might may need it again. Wipe my hands off. Use my towel as my oven mitt for this cast iron. Wait for my oil to melt. I have my um, spatula with the openings in it so that I have, um, I can control the burn of this. And I'm gonna take my biggest one Take that some of that off and put it on this little one. I want them the same size so they'll cook around the same time. I know I'm not going to be able to fit all of them on here. But I'm going to show a try. No, I'm only going to put two in here at a time. 
Never overcrowd your pan. You're frying it. You're not boiling it. <laughs> Wash my hands again. The thing I don't like about cooking is dishes. I hate dishes. I hate to do dishes, but I hate a dirty kitchen also. So I have to fight with myself and make sure that my kitchen is completely clean every time I cook to include the dishes. And I say to myself, self, why do you use so many dishes when you cook? I used to complain about Linda and I'm just like her. Excuse me, I gotta fix myself. And uh, anyway, here we go. We are frying up the, um, let me show it to you. This is what they look like on the plate. And here we are on the frying pan. Oh, that, <laughs> that scared me. That was the board moving. And I'm back to where I was, back to where we started. I'm gonna take this and mush it down a little bit. Gotta be a little patient. And wait. Let me get another plate so that when this is done, I have somewhere to put it. So there's many ways to eat this. The way I eat it is in between two slices of, of bread, but I have had it um, at restaurants with like macaroni salad, um, not potatoes, maybe some French fries because it is a fry considered, it's kind of like a hamburger, a fish hamburger. Um, I've had it with French fries, onion rings, um, on a bun by itself next to a piece of lettuce or salad. Um, there's a lot of ways to eat this, but basically this is a fast food. This is something that I believe you should keep in your freezer once you fry them. Um, or you don't have to fry them. You could actually freeze them like that. I prefer to have them cooked so I could just heat them up. Um, and you just pull them out and you put them on the bread. The only thing that's um, the only thing that's considered raw is the egg. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over. Carefully, carefully, carefully. I'm gonna turn this down, this is too hot. I want it to cook all the way through. I wanna make sure that egg is done. So I turned it down to about four, okay? Where's my rag? And I have my trusty seasoning here that I'm gonna use for a couple of other recipes because I'm gonna use a tablespoon. I make this stuff maybe once a year. This bottle will last me a year. Um, I might make give this one away because I already have a bottle, but yeah, this bottle will last me a long time. Then you don't have to buy ready-made seasoning. You Actually, you don't have to buy any ready-made seasoning. You can make your own seasoned salt by using, instead of using the, um, the turmeric, and the mushroom, you could use paprika, onion, garlic, salt, pepper, and you have your own season salt. So, just food for thought. You don't have to buy McCormick or, what is that, Lowry's? I have both of them in here. Lowry's is a lot saltier than McCormick's, by the way. I don't like Lowry's. I think we use that, um, I don't know where we use, we use that, but it is super salty. I, I just don't care for it. But it's up to you. If you like Lowry's, you go on. Go on with your bad self. You can use Lowry's in these um, salmon patties. You can use any seasoning you like. The basic thing is you have seasoning, the egg, the crackers. If you're going to use regular crackers, I believe it's like 10 crackers, 10 to 15 crackers. You want to get the consistency so they can get a, get a ball. 
an egg, and I think that's it. You're done. In the frying pan and some oil. So seasoning the fish, which is the um the the salmon crackers and an egg. Done. By the way, my my uh, chihuahua is back in the house. You don't hear him barking, but you hear chinga 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 chinga. So it's either the barking, uh uh, out out out. Either the barking, get out, Chico. It's either the barking or him annoying the crap out of me in the house. I love him, though. I love him so. Chico, 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 you never, I'll never let you go. <laughs> Unless you keep on annoying me, I'm going to have to let you go. It's so hard to say goodbye. To Chico tomorrow or today. Out, boy. Boy, he's a puppy. He doesn't understand. Now he's leaving. Begrudgingly. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. So I'm only going to do two of them on camera because I don't want to keep you here all day, all night like Miss Marianne. That's a West Indian song. All day, all night, Miss Marianne. Down by the seaside, swift and sand. Even little children love Miss Marianne. All day, all night, Miss Marianne. So we're done. Here you go, your salmon patties. I hope you all enjoyed my um, puppies running around and me trying to cook and the seasoning mix and all that stuff. I'm just trying to show you that cooking is easy turn this off for now and that you can make your own food you don't have to go to the supermarket and have them sell you something that they have pre-made that's just to me it's a waste of money you're better off making your mistakes and sometimes you're gonna have to eat a little bit of bad food before you get really good at it but if you keep following recipes like from people who have experience and a lot of people on YouTube have experience there's so many recipes out there you don't have to do it and you can save money and you can eat healthier because you know what you put in your food. You don't know what they're putting in your food. Example, steaks. We used to put a big old pat of butter on every steak that we put out to the public. Did anybody know that? No. They just knew that the steak came out looking juicy and glistening. Well, the reason why it was glistening is because it was full of fat. So. I could talk on and on about this, but main thing is cook your own food and you know pretty much what's in it and you can pretty much gauge what calories you're going to take in and what chemicals you're taking into your body and what flavors and how to mix flavors together. And the less you have to depend upon other people to do things for you, the better. My opinion. So you all take care. This is Jamerica. Please like and subscribe and I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.